guys welcome back to another youtube video it's your favorite science teacher disha today we'll be working the cape environmental science unit one 2017 past paper but before we get into it you already know the cliche drill like share and subscribe stay tuned says define the term ecological niche for one mark so just one statement could suffice this an ecological niche describes the position of a species within an ecosystem and then part b says the law of competitive exclusion state that no two species will occupy the same niches and compete for the same resources Figure one illustrate the niches for species A and species E. So I'm giving you a minute to carefully examine figure one. Niches for species A and species B. So the first thing that should come to your mind is Goss's law. So part one says, what does the region X represent? So what is happening between the two species? What is the driving force that is going to shift one of these species towards a different ecological niche? Competition, right? So X is competition. And then part two says, draw a similar diagram to show how the niches of two species will change over time. All right, guys, I have done this on a piece of blank paper. I hope this suffice you right so after a while there's going to be divergence between species a and species b and then c says identify two types of interactions other than competition between organisms in communities wow so they gave away the answer here all right so two other interactions i hope you did not place things like commensalism mutualism all of those individually because those are grouped, right? So you could say symbiosis and predation. And the other part of the question says, define one of the types of interaction above and use an example to explain how it may influence the population numbers of an organism in an ecosystem. So I am choosing predation, right? And I defined what predation is, it involves an organism known as the predator killing and consuming another organism known as the prey. And I've also expound how predation influenced the population number of organisms in the ecosystem. And then lastly, outline the role of adaptation in this same interaction. So how have predators or prey adapted to surviving in ecosystem with respect to their niche. On the predator side, in order to survive, predators must be able to outsmart their prey and use their advantage like senses, physical adaptation such as sharp teeth and claws, as well as hunting strategies like camouflaging. And on the prey side, we could say that these organisms adapt to survive in many ways to avoid being eaten. Right. Part four says, discuss the relationship between species diversity and ecosystem stability. Students, I cannot stress enough how important this question is. It's a common question as well as it is an underlying objective of your CAPE environmental science syllabus, right? 
And to answer this, you need to know what is species diversity and what is ecosystem stability? How do they relate? What happens if you have a decline in one, what will happen to the other and vice versa? So here is my interpretation in short here. Moving on to number two, two groups of students were taken to a natural savanna ecosystem where they determined the distribution of three plant species. Group one used the line transit method while group two used the quadrat method. And this is the result here. The corresponding question says, explain the difference between the methods used by group one and group two. What is this, what is this question asking you? To differentiate between using a line transect and using a quadrat. So here I have put the difference for using for what is a transect versus what is a quadrat. And part two says a student decided to use the data collected by group two to estimate the density for species A and the percentage frequency for species B. Calculate the values for each of these two parameters using the data collected by group two. To calculate this, remember, we're only using data from group two, which used the quadrat method. And to find the density, you're gonna divide the total number of individuals of a species in all the quadrat. So for species B, the total number, and you're gonna divide it by the number of quadrats time the quadrat area, right? All right, moving on, explain two ways in which human activities can disrupt the integrity of natural ecosystem for marks. The first question you should ask yourself is, what is ecosystem integrity, right? And after you have documented that, you should now think about how human activities disrupt the integrity of natural ecosystems right? We're talking about the anthropogenic activities, right? How do humans use the environment in terms of land development, resource extraction, recreation, pollution, right? Now, number three says figure two illustrates how the population size of country X is influenced by demographic characteristics or factors represented by the letters A, B, C, and D. And the first part of the question is asking you to identify the demographic characteristics or factors labeled A, B, C, and D. So you should be thinking about what are some demographic factors that can affect the population size of a country? Hmm? Well, you can think about mortality, you can think about fecundity, you can think about the sex ratio, the age structure, right? Migration and immigration. Those are some things you could think about in answering part A. And B says, outline two reasons why urbanization is likely to occur in a Caribbean country. First thing you should be asking yourself is, what is urbanization? Hmm? Well, remember urbanization occurs when you have people moving from rural areas to urban areas. Rural areas could be the countryside and urban areas could be the city side, right? And then you could think about it in your country to say that why would people move from rural areas in my country to urban areas in my country? It could be that there are more employment opportunities concentrated in the urban areas than the rural areas, making more people um, going to capitalize on those job opportunities. And then secondly, it could be that there are more social services in the urban areas. So people could permanently move there for education and social welfare. And of course, part C says, explain three environmental impacts of urbanization in the Caribbean. What is going to happen if you have people moving from rural areas to the urban areas? 
So here are some points you can argue and you can argue on land insecurity, the worsening of the water quality in the, the urban areas, the excessive pollution that is going to occur, the noise pollution and the problem of waste disposal. And the last part of this question says, discuss a suitable approach that can be used to minimize any one of the environmental impacts discussed in the second part here. So this, this is what they're talking about. What can be done to minimize any one of the environmental impacts? And here are my points to summarize the answer. You could talk about providing alternative sources of energies, um, reusing, reducing, and recycling, um, finding proper places to dispose waste, and building better housing solutions. Moving on to number four. Table three shows demographic statistics for four Caribbean countries. Use the data provided in the table to answer the question that follow. And they're asking you to define the terms total fertility rate, replacement fertility rate. They're firstly asking you to define total fertility rate versus replacement fertility rate. Um, you, so here are the definitions for both of them. So you could take that into consideration. And discuss one measure which the Caribbean government can implement to control the birth rates. Well, the first thing that should come to your mind is educating the population. And you might say, Miss, how is this related? It is very much related here. The spread of education changes the outlook of people. The table below shows types of natural resources in the Caribbean. Examples of these resources are not given. Complete the table by stating an example of each type of natural resource. So I've already filled out the table for you. So the, the type is ecosystem, water, landscape, and I have provided some examples here. So you could replace groundwater with rivers or the ocean. And you could replace trees with anything that constitute the ecosystem. And same thing for landscape. Next part of the question says, most Caribbean countries have tourism-based economies. In order to sustain their economies, many beachfront properties are being constructed. This caused three environmental impacts associated with this pattern of resource use. What is this question asking you? To support the growth of tourism in the Caribbean, the governments are constructing many beachfront properties. The construction of these beachfront properties can have environmental impacts, right? And they're asking you to, to discuss them so I had so again I have summarized these into some points here and then using a name example explain how the Ramsar convention may be used as a tool for natural resource conservation in the Caribbean first thing you should ask yourself what is the Ramsar convention Hmm? It is an interglobal, it is an intergovernmental treaty that provides the framework for national action and international cooperation for the conservation and wise use of wetland and their resources. And it says using a name example. So you could think about your country. Do you have wetlands in Jamaica? Are you from Trinidad? Do you have wetlands in Trinidad? Right? How can the Ramsar Convention be a tool to conserve these resources here in the Caribbean? Moving on to number six, a small country A consists of 450 kilometers square of uninhabited moist tropical forest. This area is home to endemic bird species. It is also the home to two amphibians to reptiles and 65 plants, which are found only in the area. It is an area with high ecotourism value. However, 
it is at risk from bauxite mining. Unfortunately for the birds, the landscape and many communities, the, the country is pushing hard to extract every bit of bauxite from the soil. How sad. To export for aluminum production. Tourism now generates 45% of the country's foreign earnings and provide jobs for approximately a quarter of the working population. And then mining employs fewer person and is not sustainable. So with all of this scenario given here, they want you to just simply use example from the description of country A to distinguish between consumptive and non-consumptive uses of natural resources. The first thing you should do to try to understand this question is to think about what are some consumptive uses of natural resources versus non-consumptive uses of natural resources. So consumptive use of natural resources refers to the use of natural resources in which these resources are utilized and removed from their natural environment. So you could say that the consumptive in this case could be extracting the bauxite for aluminum production. Then the non-consumptive use of natural resources involve the use of these resources in ways that do not reduce their availability or supplies. And given the scenario here, it says the area has high ecotourism value. So that could be a non-consumptive use in that tourists could come to those areas to enjoy the forest air, the forest value, to um, visit the same environment, you know, without damaging it or disturbing their habitats. You know, they're coming, they're coming to look at the, it says here amphibian, reptiles or plant species but they're not destroying them or taking them from their natural habitat. And then B says, outline two environmental impacts the bauxite mining may have on this country. So here are some examples of environmental impacts that you can comment on. Cutting down the trees, deforestation, erosion, because you're removing the topsoil and all the, the, the top layers to go deep in the earth to find the bauxite. Um, contamination, um, alteration of soil profiles, I just said that, right? Contamination of local streams and wetland, um, increase in noise level, increase in dust in the communities. Stakeholder groups suggested the use of more stringent environmental impact assessment prior to the continuation of bauxite mining in country A. Comment on the use of EIA as a natural resource management tool. So determining if this place is suitable or non-suitable for the continuation of bauxite mining.